All right, so we'll get started for today. Obviously today is October 1st and we're thinking fall. So this first one will have kind of a fall type theme. I'm gonna draw my standard box here, nothing fancy. Obviously mine's a little bit larger than it needs to be for yours. I'm um, gonna we'll make it quite this large. So across the section, I'm gonna draw kind of an arched line. You can make yours kind of a, gent a gentle wave or you can have it just be straight if that's what you want. But it's a double, a double line there, so those lines don't touch. Right in the center, I'm going to draw a half circle here and finish the circle on the bottom. This should not go through that center line, it should be behind it. And now I'm going to draw these little arch lines that come right off the side of the circle. And then the same thing on the bottom, it's going to shoot down. There's no real no science to this, just kind of draw it so it looks maybe even. I'm going to draw a line straight up the middle from the top of the arch or the top of the circle and straight down. Those two lines are straight, those two center ones. On each side of the line, I'm going to draw two kind of sort of arch lines that start out skinny and get a little further apart, like you want. And then the same thing down here. We kind of get wide there at the bottom. And it's going to get wide there. You may be asking yourself, why are we drawing two lines? The reason you have to draw two lines is because it makes three sections. So. I'm going to color this center piece in. This is where you can kind of change your design however you want. Um, if you don't want your center section colored here, you don't have to. You can put something else there. And it is. Um, we can kind of see that it looks like kind of like a bundle of wheat. Right. All right, so something just like that. And that's the basic pattern. I'm going to move over slightly. I'm going to repeat the exact same process that I just did. by drawing the, <clears throat> excuse me, the half circles. I'm going to come up and go behind the one before. So I'm going to stop my line right here. I'm not going to let it flare out in front. It's going to be behind. And then that one goes all the way to the side there. And then, of course, to make it even, you start with those two line, straight lines on the top and the bottom. And two additional lines on each side. And again, if you don't like this design, you can certainly tweak it however you wish. Um, that's just the basic patterns. Um, so you make the basic, basically all of the ones that I do for this pattern. Then I'm gonna go back and just color that in. You can, again, you can you can color this in at the beginning when you draw it. You can color it in at the end, whatever you want to do. So we're just gonna keep repeating this exact same process all the way through on the right side until I get to the end, and then I'm gonna go back and do the left side as well. Alright, so now on this, I only have a little bit of a section here, but it does need something in there. So I'm just going to draw kind of a bottom section. I forgot this part here. Um, a little bottom section there just to finish off that little dead uh, edge. I don't want to have a, just a big white space in there. So you may not have that. Um, it's up to you what you have for your design. And now I'm going to go to the other side.
and I'm going to put a little piece down here as well, just like I did on the other side, just because that white space is a little bit too big. So there's our little bundles of wheat. At least it kind of looks like that. Um, it's kind of neat with color, so you can certainly do that. Now, another option that you have is that you can shade in this back section. This is completely optional. If you like it to be white, it kind of makes it stand out a little bit. So you certainly don't need to uh, color this part in. You can just use a gray colored pencil. You can add a different color. So maybe like you could do kind of like a sunset thing that kind of pops out behind there. You could use any color that you want or you can just do a pencil. I'm doing mine fairly light. Um, but it kind of makes it all look like one color. Um, if you kind of squint your eyes, all that you see is that, that black circle. So you certainly don't need to do this. Or you can make the pencil lines darker if you want them to be darker. Just I wouldn't go with black since that center circle is black. It will lose some of its definition there. But again, this part's completely optional. You can tweak it however you want. You can add additional shading on the edges of your wheat as well, but I'm just going to go on from here. Alright, so the next one that we're going to do, I'm just going to draw a little bit smaller um, box here. It's, it's not really important what size it is. Alright, so I'm going to, again, work on the diagonal. You don't have to. You can go straight across. And I'm going to draw a series of bubbles. So they're going to be kind of in a line, but sort of wonk, a wonky line. And they're not all the same size, they're not all the same shape, some are more ovular, uh, uh, some are a little bit smaller. It just kind of, you can kind of see it goes sort of straight across my section, but it's all wonky. So I'm going to do with a little bit of a U shape, it's really skinny, and I'm just going to continuously trace that U until my bubble is full. Um, this one I'm going to go upside out, so it's going to be kind of a little arch. Exact same process, just alternating where that initial U is. So here is the U. I'm going to fill it in. Again, these are really skinny lines. They do not touch. You can alter this however you want, but that's the original design that I saw. And then there's a little bump here, and then it's just going to be um, creating uh, arches from there. Sometimes it's hard to draw and talk, sorry. <laughs> So don't worry too much if some of your lines get a little bit far away. It's just kind of a wonky sort of drawing. It's nothing too, um, you know, structured or, or anything like that. So then, uh, I know I always start in the middle of the line. You can start wherever you want. And then those end ones, you just have to kind of eyeball where you think it would be and then fill in the lines around it. So just like that. So something like that. So now I'm going to draw a dividing line. So these are kind of just like sort of straight, maybe a little bit arched, not super straight uh, lines here. And then two at the top. So it just kind of creates a little divider. Nothing fancy. And now I'm going to do that same bubble effect again. And again, as you do your own design, you can certainly alter how you have this pattern. You can have something else in this section. Um, you can do just the bubbles, you know, around the outside and put something in the center. You can certainly make it whatever you want, but I'm just going to use this as a fill, uh, except for the first section here. Same exact process here.
Oh, that's, that looks pretty great. Now I'm going to go to my bigger marker. Um, again, these are things that you can you can tweak and change yourself. I'm just going to uh, fill in these divider lines. If you want to do something else or you want to add some color here, you certainly can. Um, if you want to leave these white and then do the background around the bubbles black, you certainly can do that. It kind of looks kind of neat. Um, you can add some shading on the bubbles and do something really dramatic. Um, you can make it entirely your own. Anything that you want. I'm just going to fill them in for some piece of music. And then I'm going to grab my pencil here and I'm just going to shade in one of the backgrounds here. Uh, this again, this is very light. And it's just to show you what it would look like if you had you know, a different kind of background here. This is completely optional. Um, I have another one that I did for the actual live class. Um, my, my drawing sheet and it, I put some green colored pencil in here. It looks kind of neat. So you can certainly do uh, colored pencil in the background. You can make the bubbles the color and then the background black and white uh, or gray and white or some kind of monochromatic uh, color theme there. Again, anything you want to do. So as you can see, I just did the pencil in every other one, and now I'm just going to go back and just put some dots in here using my sharp. You know, my hand's kind of in the way. You have to kind of hold the pen upright to get these dots in there, but it's just some random points that are not, you know, not really touching. I'm not being too careful. Just kind of sticking them in there. Again, completely optional. It's entirely up to you. So that actually would be a really cute idea for an Easter one. You could turn those egg, uh, little bubbles into eggs. All right, so I'm going to do a border here. Again, this can be a fill section, whatever you want. I'm going to kind of think of think of Tetris, if you remember Tetris from the original Nintendo. I'm going to draw this wonky L shape. Now I'm going to go a little bit higher and draw another um, kind of upside down L here. And then right off of that, I'm going to draw another L. So it's a series of L's that are next to each other. Um, and don't necessarily line up exactly. They're all different shapes. There's a little small piece here, 
And then it's going to be down a little bit from the top piece. So it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Again, you can make this however many sections you want. I'm just going to stop here. Um, so now you have to find your right corner. So this one here is my right angle. So I'm going to draw these little teardrop shapes. Actually, they're quite large. And you want to go from kind of a corner to an edge, but not touch anything else in between. So you're just going to draw these um, misshaped, I'm not misshaped, they're mis they're, they don't match up in size. Uh, different sized little teardrops in here until you've filled the section. And all the points should point back to your original uh, cor uh, corner. So whichever it is, one it is that you decide, that's what your original, all of them should point back to that. So now this one here has a big center. I drew another little one inside of there. You can draw whatever you want inside of these. And around the outside, I'm just going to do these quick little hatch mark lines that actually follow the shape. So they don't all, like you can see that I'm going around the corner here. Um, I want my lines to be straight across the section, not, um, you know, all running the same direction. Make sense? So this one here, I'm going to put a little teardrop inside to create that outside edge. And then I'm going to put these slash marks in there. So we, we use slash marks a lot. It's a really great way to get kind of a hand-drawn look um, without too much fuss. You don't have to be super accurate. And then this one's kind of small, but I'm going to put that one on here. So all of these little teardrop shapes are going to have this extra ridge on the outside, and it's going to have the same uh, line detail on the outside. Some have a center. If they're large enough, some will not. Alright, so something just like that. This one here I think is enough room for a little piece inside. And I'm just going to color it in solid black. Again, you can do whatever you want. If your pieces are really large, you may have room for additional teardrops inside. So this is optional. It might not even be something that works on your piece. It's up to you. So now on the next one, I'm going to find my right corner. Again, my right angle that uh, is the largest right angle, I should say. They're all right angles. But this one here, um, or similar like right angles, this one here is the largest. So you want to find your point, and you don't want the little teardrop shapes to be all going in the same direction. So even if you use, you know, the other corner, and you go whichever way um, you want, then you, you just don't want to have. Uh, let's see if I can. You just don't want to have them running the same direction. You can see one comes from one side, one comes from the other corner. You may have one coming up from the bottom. You just want to have them so they're not coming from the same direction. Long-winded way of saying that, I guess. <laughs> this one's kind of tiny. See, I'm not, I, I may not have a center on any of these. Um, and you can also see that I do have an odd number here. But the one that I drew in class only has four in each one. So if you can only get four, the um, odd and even number police are not going to come after you. You can just stick with your uh, uh, even number if that's what you have. It's no big deal. Um, it's more of just a guideline that the eye likes odd numbers. So if you can get three, then that's fine. If you can get four, you should go for it.
All right, so those look really great. So now I'm going to do one little detail, and I'm going to kind of go back and put a little stitching mark on there. It's just a really wonky, odd direction little line that goes along the center pieces of all these L's. So it's just going to run along that one section. And then I'm going to go over and do the same in the middle here. They're not all running the same direction, not, not the same length. It should be like a homemade rough stitch is what it looks like, or stuff, you know, rough, uh, yeah, stitch. And you would do this all the way, you can do it around the outside if you have something else, like make it look like it's kind of patchwork. You can certainly do that if you have other patterns around. So there are the drawings for today. We hope that you enjoy these patterns. Um, get something out of them. Don't forget you can tweak them and make them entirely your own. We also do have live class from 5.30 to 6.30 every Thursday. Registration and masks are required. Um, but we'd love to see you if you're willing to come out. Otherwise, we will meet here again virtually next Thursday. Have a great day.